Roy. Uh, my name is Daniel Blackshoes. I normally read the faces, some of the faces I don't. Um, so welcome along to um, our seminar series on integrated learning. Um, this is, well, what will probably be the culmination of, of a book we were supposed to have in Routledge on the 1st of April, we'll get there on the 1st of May now. Um, and it's to, I suppose, in some ways, act as a, as a forum for us um, to get feedback from other people as well in terms of us writing our introduction. And also just to um, start the conversation, or develop the conversation in UCC. Um, the book, The Routledge, is called uh, Integrated Learning International Research and Practice, and I'm delighted to uh, be able to say that there is a, a, a very, very heavy and substantial Irish involvement and a very, very substantial University College Cork uh, involvement in this book. Um, and what it is doing, or what we hope it is doing, is continuing on a conversation uh, that was, I suppose, formally started by Mary Hoover and Pat Hutchin in 2004 in Mapping the Terrain, uh, developed on to a number of writers, some of which I've given references to in your pack, and uh, by the Irish Integrated Learning Project from an Irish setting in 2008. And within that uh, development for an air uh, we discovered that there was a lot of people doing things around the area of integrated learning. And we felt there was probably scope uh, to go back into the breach once more and explore um, some of the other possibilities that other people that we didn't mention in that 2008 book uh, was what they were developing in terms of integrated learning. Um, as it's just kind of a, a framing uh, exercise, I'd like to follow a quote made by uh, Indian philosopher uh, called Jiri Krishnamurti, and it was uh, used as a, a quote at the start of the Mapping Terrain book as well. He said, well, what do you consider to be the purpose of education? Is it not to bring about an integrated individual? And one of the questions that uh, many of us in the Irish Integrated Learning Project and on and towards in terms of the book we're now developing has been to clear, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to be an integrated individual? What does it mean to be an integrated individual in the 21st century? And what role, if any, does higher education have in developing this integrated self? We hear a lot these days about the super complexity, confusion, contradictions um, that exist in the world around us, where all problems now seem to be related to interlinked, economic, environmental, and social, political. In many ways, I think most of us are students, uh, no more so than anybody else, are like Norman Rockwell's man standing before an abstract painting, wondering how to make sense of it all. And to make sense of it all these days, perhaps what we do need is the ability to be able to integrate our learning, to integrate our experiences, to integrate our formal learning experiences across disciplines across courses within disciplines, to integrate our learning with ourselves. What does this mean to me as an individual? To be able to integrate our formal learning, but all that learning that takes place in informal spaces. It reminds me when I was thinking about how to start this, and it reminds us of one of my literary heroes, and more particularly a, a, a film version of Sherlock Holmes. And there's a scene in the new Sherlock where Sherlock goes into his mind palace. <laughs> and the mind palace is about entering back into your memory where you have stored all your experiences or aspects of your experiences to try to raise them back up and see if you try to create synergies between them how you learn something creative and new. And what I like about this course is all the synapses in the brain that they're visualizing and the links between them. On a very much at biological level, we're integrated in human beings. We attempt to integrate how we learn, how we develop our learning. The question is, can everybody do that, or do some people more scaffolding more scaffolding than others? Can we leave it to students themselves to do this? In a world where the institutional logics are tending more and more towards silence, towards compartmentalization, and marginalization, and so forth, is there a danger that that integrates so, so to the cracks? So what we queried, and what we have been queried for a number of years now, is within the institutional logics, as, uh, as they exist, what are the opportunities for integrated learning, integrated learning in the learning, in the formal learning in the self, integrated learning across modules, integrated learning, where it's mind and heart that we need. 
what are the opportunities, what are the obstacles? And this was the task we set um, about 35 authors um, over a year ago to explore in a form of case studies, not some of which you hear today. So we hope you enjoy it. We hope you get something out of this. Um, there is an exercise at the end of this where I'm getting people to develop a reflective journal. There are three questions in your pack that I'm asking people to consider uh, as you listen to the talks. One, what will you take from the seminar that you have identified with and are already familiar with? What will you take from the seminar that you have identified with and are something new in your perspective? And what might the implications of your reflections from the seminar be to your teaching and student learning? The way we have set it up is as not prescriptions, but rather ways into this idea of integrated learning um, through a series of case studies. We're going to have three case studies, three case studies, two, and uh, in between into space that breaks. The reason for that is a lot of speakers give their case study, and then if we have conversations and questions for the individual speakers, then we can have it over the informal setting of tea and coffee, and hopefully people will be able to stay for a panel discussion, a wider discussion there afterwards. Uh, during the piece. Uh, so again, as I say, I hope you enjoy it.